Poker is certainly a undeniable part of culture, especially American culture. It's in TV shows, it's in movies, there's all different ways to play it. There's big giant world championships, tournaments, lots of money on the line. Uh, it's even in our vernacular where different things will say, a straight, full house, don't show your cards, songs about it. The thing is poker, and most people would agree that poker is best when there is financial things on the line. For some people it's a little bit of money, for some people it is a lot of money. My question is, what do you do when there's no, I have no money? Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and I like to talk about board games. Now at the forefront, I'm going to say that I know that poker is a phenomenal game and that millions of people really enjoy it. And I'm not here to down it or talk badly about it, but as I said, I do understand that poker works best when there's financial money online. I'm not really uh, interested in putting hard cash on the results of a game, although I know a lot of people are, and a lot of the games I'm going to talk about today People have even put money on them, but you don't have to. And that's why I like these 10 games better than poker, but have some of the similarities. So if you like poker, there's a good chance you'll like some of these games. We'll start out with Liar's Dice. Liar's Dice is a very popular game. It's been published by many different companies, sometimes called Liar's Dice, sometimes called Bluff. There's even been a version of it in the second movie in the Pirates of the Caribbean series. Um, this is a game in which you are rolling dice, looking at the dice you have, and then basically saying how many dice of a certain number everybody has. Bluffing on your own, guesstimating what everybody else has, and people keep going till someone calls out and says there's no way there's eight threes out here between all of us. It is a fun bluffing, uh, easy game to get into. Most versions go to six players. I've even heard of it going higher than that to eight. It can be played in tournaments. It's a lot of fun, liar's dice. Another bluffing game is Sheriff of Nottingham. Sheriff of Nottingham is a game in which each round of the game, one person is the sheriff, everyone else is um, trying to smuggle things across the border. They hand the sheriff a bag of cards, they say this is five cheese, and they clearly know that it is actually two crossbows and three um, barrels of wine, which are illegal goods. And they have to bluff and lie and maybe even negotiate back and forth, a silly but incredibly entertaining game. Also a great bluffing game. This one just coming out now called Bitter Up. And Bitter Up, you are bidding on different animals, trying to get these animals. There's an auction game here. And you are getting these animals and collecting sets of animals, but occasionally you're gonna to wanna to trade with someone else to get their animals. And you will offer them cards, some money cards, but they don't see what you're offering. And they will either take your offer or make a counter offer. And there are cards with zero on them. And this bluffing back and forth is incredibly entertaining and is really the meat of the game, Bitter Up. Skull. This is another game which has uh, basically cards that look like coasters with skulls and roses and things on them. And you're putting cards on a pile and then at some point someone's going to draw cards from that pile without trying to grab a skull. And you're bluffing and bidding and people don't know what cards are exactly on what pile. Really entertaining little game, very similar actually to the first game I mentioned, Liar's Dice, but with cards. Then we have Welcome to the Dungeon. Now this is uh, not as much like poker with the cards. This is more about pushing your luck. If you like to push your luck and think, I can just go a little bit farther, that's what Welcome to the Dungeon is. It's a silly little game where there's a fighter or a cleric or somebody going through a dungeon. And it's one person, and everyone is basically either adding cards to the dungeon or taking that person's equipment away from them until at least someone says, you know what, I can't take this person through that dungeon. When only one person's left, they have to use that equipment and get through the dungeon that has been growing and they will either make it or fail. And so there's kind of, again, a, that whole push your luck aspect to this light little fun card game. Also a push your luck type game, another light small card game is No Thanks. This is a game in which each turn a card is turned face up and if you want that card, you take it. You normally don't want cards, they're worth points. Or you throw a chip on that card and you keep going around and you will throw chips on cards so that you don't take them, but eventually you'll run out of chips or a card will have so many chips on it that you'll say, I'll take that point just to get some more chips into my hand to play on other cards. Sometimes taking a card won't hurt you at all, and you'll say, well, I'm gonna let it go around the table to get some more chips and kind of push your luck there. A really great little card game, no thanks. Then we have Spyfall. Part of poker is about reading other people. That's why some people, I think it's kind of cheesy, wear hats and sunglasses and all, 
But if you like to look at someone else and say, is that person lying to me? Here's a couple games for you here. The first is Spyfall. In Spyfall, the theme is kind of fantastical in which everyone gets a location, a card, and it might say the mall, or it might say a submarine, or it might say an airplane. And everyone is asking each other questions, trying to figure out who got a card that says spy, because that person has no idea where they are. So they're listening to the questions, trying to figure it out. If they do, they win. And everyone else is trying to say, the answer you just answered, there's no way you know that we're at the beach right now, so you're the spy. Very fun trying to guess and outthink other players. Another game where you read other players is a game called Coup. This also has some bluffing to it, where you just have a few cards. You're going to play a card and say, I am playing the Duke, and I am taking this action. And everyone says, okay, take that action. And one person says, excuse me, I, I think you're lying, and they'll call you out on it. A lot of fun, very quick game, Coup. And then if you like the hands in poker, like a straight or putting out groups of cards, then I would recommend a game called Shot and Totten or Battle Line. There are two different, it's the exact same game with two different themes. One's about a Scottish tug of war, um, and the other is about just having groups. And in this game, you are slowly, in this two player game, playing groups of cards, trying to get three of the same, or one, two, three of the same color, or one, two, three of any color, and beating your opponent's hand of cards at each of the locations. It's a very tense little game, and if you like poker hands type games, this is one I would recommend. And then finally, Dice Town itself is, just takes the poker theme. In this game, you have dice with different poker, um, different card symbols on them, and you are rolling them and trying to get poker hands to get a straight or four of a kind or even five of a kind because you have five dice. And you can manipulate your dice and you're in the Old West and trying to get gold nuggets and money and get land and just get as many points as you can and outthink the other players. It just has a big poker theme to it, although not necessarily like poker. Anyhow, again, a lot of people love poker, but if you love it, these are 10 games that I think that you would also enjoy. Check them out. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.